Okay. Hey there, everybody. My name is Susan Hale. I am one of your administrators for our Facebook groups. I am so excited about tonight's workshop. I want to introduce you to Devin. Devin is also an administrator, but I want to tell you a little bit about her before we have her kick off her workshop. Now, if you're curious about what the workshop is tonight, it's homeschooling. Where do we start? And that is a really great question mm -hmm. that was posed to Devin. Um, Devin does um, how homeschool house calls and she gets that question a lot and also managing the groups and um, we thought, wow, well, this is a great topic for us to address. I've got a year. Yeah, we both have a lot of new people um, in our Facebook groups, and we want to make sure that we help you out when it comes to homeschooling. So let me tell you a little bit about Devin. Devin is, as you know, one of your administrators for your Facebook groups. And Devin herself, um, growing up, was public schooled. And I bring this up because of the fact that Devin has five children. She has homeschooled all five of her children, and um, one of them has graduated. One is soon to graduate, and one's as young as five. And the thing is, Devin can speak from a wealth of homeschooling information because she's done it for 17 years. And the other is she can also, for those of you that might be going from public school into homeschooling or private school into homeschooling, and you might have some anxiety, um, Devin can give you peace of mind on that because she can also speak to that as well. Mm -hmm. So she can speak from a wealth of information um, of 17 years of homeschooling yeah. and then also um, herself having the experience of being public schooled. So helping you with transitions and then also um, homeschool house calls and being um, and a, a um, running a cover school. She can really give you a wealth of information. So I am so excited to introduce you to Devin <laughs> with homeschool house calls and her presentation tonight. So welcome, Devin. Awesome. I'm so glad to be here. I'm Devin, Homeschool House Calls. My Facebook group is Professional Home Educator. Um, we provide workshops. We provide just all sorts of stuff. Lots and lots of stuff going on, and um, I enjoy it. And I'm so glad to be here tonight to speak about where to start. Now, I'm going to start off by saying that we had some really great questions and because I want to be able to answer them, I decided to cut this um, workshop in half. We're going to do where to start. And then at the end, I'll answer some of the questions and I'll answer any that y'all have too, but I will do curriculum sometime next week. I'll just pick a dime. I don't have a set time. We have other speakers and other things going on, but I will pick a time and I will, I'll work it out and we will do curriculum too. So don't freak out if I don't cover curriculum tonight. We will. I mean, I promise. Um, those of y'all who know me, I'm not going to leave you hanging. So if I look weird, I'm going to, if I look at the camera weird, I'm going to show my slides, but I have to kind of do a little sleight of hand and I may not see your comments. Susan will grab them and make sure that I, I see those. So don't, don't worry too much. And while Devin's pulling up her slides and her information, drop us a note inside the comments. Say well, hello to us. Here. We would love to say hello to you. And also tell us how long you've been homeschooling. Are you new to homeschooling? Have you, are you a, maybe you're a seasoned pro and you're here and you can also add some tips to help support our new homeschooling moms. So by all means, drop us some notes inside of the comments area. Okay, so let's get started on this. Um, okay, so first things first, relax. You don't have to know all the answers today or even tomorrow. We're going to take this journey one day at a time, one step at a time. And it's just like, you know, when you bring that baby home from the hospital, that baby did not walk the day you brought them home. Everything builds on each other. So one of the beauties of homeschooling is mama can learn too, even if it is just navigating homeschooling and not actually, you know, algebra, which I actually did. <laughs> I am not a math whiz and I actually did study algebra. And after that, I found a tutor. So I've, I've got all sorts of tricks for y'all. So anyway, that's our first thing to remember relax you're okay you don't have to know everything today 
Yeah, I want to add to that, Devin, for just a second. Yeah. Yeah, that was the one thing I needed to do when I started homeschooling, which I started homeschooling four and a half years ago. And I want to ask any of you moms that are watching right now, when you started homeschooling, or maybe you're at that spot right now, were you a little nervous, a little bit anxious like I was? Oh my um, gosh, I was totally nervous. It's like every, and every time there was a transition, like going from elementary to middle school or middle school to high school, there's always a, this element of nervousness. And my son starting college, I have been a nervous wreck. <laughs> yeah, and you're not teaching him. No, so, so the else, thing, for the first so, time in his life. Yeah. So what's made you nervous about it? Just because I, I'm curious about that, Devin. I think some of it is it's almost like you feel like you're being graded. Like, how good did I do? Really? How, how good did I really do? And so even, you know, a, after 17 years, I still, you know, you still as a mother, you, you sell, you doubt yourself. But Absolutely. he has been fabulous. Yeah, I'm in the same. I'm kind of I'm, I'm a little bit behind you on that. That my I've got a freshman and in college and I, I do the same thing. It's like, oh, did I do everything yeah, right? Is she ready? Is she prepared? So even if you're a newbie mom um, to homeschooling, that 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 wonderful word of relax needs to carry through. And and you yeah. are doing the right things because you care and, yeah. and your children will do just fine and know that you're not alone when it comes time that we we get anxiety every now and then and we just need to relax mm -hmm. and count on each other for support okay so for our first time homeschool mamas i know some of y'all have maybe homeschooled a little longer but we're going to go over these really really quick so that if somebody sees it on the youtube channel later they know it now at this point you know a year ago we were really confused with covid but now, I mean, we have distance learning. That is an option that some parents use. It's perfectly fine. I mean, you know, um, if you're if you're confused about that, that's going to come from your school system, whatever school you're zoned for. for. Um, public school at home is an option. You might not know about that. There are they're almost like franchises. They are bigger name. You can actually see their commercials. You can see them if you go and type in public school at home, it will probably pop, um, you know, pop up. There are maybe three or four of these. And depending on what state you live in, it may be an option. Now, I can't, I don't know. I am not an expert on public school at home. I am trying to learn so that I can meet needs. But still, I don't know everything with that. I can just kind of maybe direct you where to look. Um, so tonight we're going to mainly talk about traditional homeschooling. This is the reason there is a difference between the first two and this one is because with the third one, you're having to handle legal um, paperwork. Um, it's not, con you know, it's not um, when you're at public school at home, you don't even have to think about it. It's like, you know, you don't even realize that the school officials are doing the paperwork with the school board, but they are. They are um, when you register with a school, they are processing paperwork, sending it into the school board. So when you're doing a traditional being a traditional homeschooler, you're having to take on that extra job. And that's OK. It's not scary. You just have to know where to find your information. Um, I will move the slide. Do we have any questions? I mean, you know, well, I'm moving forward. Yeah, while you're moving your slide, I just wanted to um, um, share with you, you're getting some great comments here. We have some newbie moms with us tonight, Devin, and we have some seasoned mamas. So seasoned mamas, we'll look forward to some of those tips that you want to share with those newbie mamas too. Yeah, we love, love, love our our veterans and we love our we love our new new homeschoolers. Um, New homeschoolers are kind of like my lifeblood because that's probably my favorite part of consulting is um, working with new moms. Um, if you, okay, y'all need to remember this is a nationwide group, nationwide, both of our groups are nationwide and maybe um, worldwide. Um, the best place I'm going to send you for finding out laws is homeschool legal defense. Um, dot org. I have the address there. There are a couple of other places you can look, but the reason I send you to them is because they are a lawyer firm. Law is their business and um, they just have a good summary. It's a good place to start. Even, even if you don't have a membership, you can go find 
that summary. You'll be able to go, you go on, you go to the laws, you look for your state. Actually, I may see if I can, um, let's see if I can pull that up real quick so that y'all can see that. Let's see. Give me just a minute. I'm yeah, while well, you're pulling that up, Devin, I'm going to take a look at some of yeah, these. Look at some of these um, there's a question that someone said. Um, I hope that this can be rewatched just in case I can't stay for all of the information. I'm sorry, I can't say your name because um, on my end, I can't always see the username. Um, but we want to tell you that, yes, absolutely, you can rewatch this. Um, it will be both in Professional Home Educator and Homeschooling Super Moms. And Devin's also, Devin, correct me if I'm wrong, you're going to post it on your YouTube channel. It will be channel. on the YouTube channel, yeah. That will probably be one of the easiest places to find it um, because just because you won't have to dig. Sometimes in the group, things get buried fast. And um, homeschoollegaldefense.org. Yeah, well, you're typing that in. Um hslda.org and um, we're getting uh, more new viewers so welcome to everyone we're glad you're here for homeschooling where do we start okay so when you're looking for homeschool laws this is a good place to go because they have not everything there you won't see everything there for free um but you can find the basics of what your state um, has. I'm going to show you my state. Um, if you want to shout out another state, we can look there. Let me see. Legal. But see, I always get weird <laughs> when I, so you can go find your state. I'm going to show you Alabama because that's where I am. But you, if you have another state, you can, you can shout out. We can look at it. Um, so you have a here at, at a glance. We have three options in Alabama. School um, is required between the ages of 6 and 17. Notifici notification is required. Teacher qualifications, no for the two options, yes for the third. Um, no mandatory subjects, no assessment requirements, and immunizations are not required except for option two. And that's just keeping something on file. You actually, um, I will go let's see i'm not gonna go no i don't want to watch anybody no 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 <laughs> y'all you know, they'll um i don't want to make i don't want it to start but anyway let me come back so i can see if anybody's um saying thing yeah so, so mamas put your state in there we want to be really, really curious what state work. you're in now in alabama we have three options two are the most used um, the one that requires um, teacher qualification is called the Tudor Law. Um, I don't know anyone who uses that one. Um, I've, they've never used that one that I know of. There might be somebody, but I've never met anybody. And I've homeschooled 17 years. We have two other options that are most used. One is called cover school law. One is called private school at home. Um, they are both quite easy to process the paperwork don't be um freaked out over immunizations you just have to keep either a blue card or an exempt form on file at your house you never send that in so that's as far as i'll go with alabama if you want to talk to me in person um, i'm happy to do that that's just where i live and so anyway so let's look at let's see arkansas but there it is so with arkansas you have one option, um, school require, school um, ages five to 17, notification is required, teacher no qualifications, no subjects, no assessment, which means no standardized testing is required, no immunizations. So um, if you click on it, uh, I don't want to watch a video, but I'm going to go down just a little bit. It can it actually gives you more information like annual annually notify the local public school superintendent that you're homeschooling. So that's your zone school board. So they just, you know, and they probably if you are a member, they might even have the paperwork inside the thing. Um, but, you know, you can probably find the paperwork. I would join one of your um, homeschool groups and just ask them what paperwork to send. Uh, let's see. Let's look over here at um, North Carolina. Let's see. That is over south, north. They have 
one option children's school the ages are 7 to 16 qualified there are qualifications but notification is required teacher qualifications yes but you'll just have to look and see what they uh, there's probably a way or, you know they have things they have state subjects no assessment yes immunizations yes so you can actually click here and go through that and honestly your homeschool groups will be your best place to go to get detailed information look for your state um homeschool groups because you'll have veterans in there that will help you so you you do a, a you let's see notice of intent the persons who provide academic instruction must at least have a high school diploma or the equivalent which is you know a ged um let's see you must operate on a schedule keep attendance and immunization records on file which probably means you don't have to mail them in anywhere um, but I don't quote me because I, I have not lived here um, administer annual standardized test so really not too not not too hard to deal with I mean not not overly not over any other any other states anybody's got a state so I'm going to remove that unless anybody has one no so I mean I like homeschool legal defense I, I've always liked them because they, they have that summary for free you can have you know join a member you can be a member and they have lots and lots of other stuff they have consultants they have special needs high school um, if you live worldwide you can go on there and they will have um, different countries and what their laws say if they have them I mean some countries allow homeschool and some don't like Germany does not allow it so that's just a good general place to find information then you can go into your homeschool state groups and you'll have veterans there who are usually very very happy to help um, if I said something crazy don't tell them I said it because then I'll get in trouble so anyway but you know it's good to have information somewhere that's easy easy to find so I am going to unshare this and go back to the original one I was sharing. Let's see. And mamas, while Devin is pulling the information, if you have a specific question, by all means, drop us a note inside the chat box. We'll be happy to take a look at that. Okay. So um, I'm not going to go quite to here yet. Okay. So your first thing is to handle your law while you're handling your law and it's usually not a not a slow process you usually can get it done um, a week or two and get it get it all done um, don't stress over anything else don't start running looking for curriculum planning your schedule handle your legal first because that is your most important step it keeps you from being truant it makes everything nice clear and concise and you're okay there's no rush it's not like this is um a race where you have to get everything done this week you can you can slow down and take a deep breath it's okay so you get all your legal stuff done you handle all that paperwork then you can take a deep breath <laughs> again I mean, i'm always a very big fan of relaxing and taking a breath and you can you'll hear this word quite a lot if you homeschool for a long time de-schooling now de-schooling is the adjustment phase between leaving a traditional brick and mortar school and moving into a new type of schooling like homeschooling they say I don't know um, I, I'll say tell you why I don't know um, I, my kids have always homeschooled I was the one that had to de-school I'm the one that even um, the year I had my baby, I reverted back to what I knew and tried to do public school at home. I had homeschooled um, how many years? 12 years. I was exhausted and I just it's just like everything in my mind. We went totally um, traditional school, which is not a thing wrong if that's what works for your children. But it was kind of funny because we had not used that. So even, you know, veteran homeschoolers sometimes will revert and we fight that mentality of what we know so the adjustment phase they say it's one month for each year in a brick and mortar so if you have a 10th grader that's going to be 11 months so i am not the person who will say 
absolutely don't do anything. It is not a bad thing to take a rest and to heal. Your goal is to heal. So if you're like pulling them out of public school and there's an issue, whether it's bullying or special needs, your job is to heal. Um, if there's special needs is to, to work on your diagnosis and to make connection with your kids. That's not a time frame. Um, if you need to not do any school during that time, it's OK. As long as you know what your law involves, you're fine. Um, you can I mean, because really, if you can heal and make that connection and work on that diagnosis, it's going to make your homeschool journey much, much easier. It's going to. I mean, especially that connection, being able to laugh together, to play together. Um, you could still do math, grab some games, do some math games, but your focus is, is to connect because once you start connecting with your kids, they're going to accept you as their teacher easier. They're going to relax and um, you're going to have a much better journey. So that's my philosophy on de-schooling. Other people may tell you different. The only time I would kind of worry is if they're in high school and that's because and that will really depend on your plan now with high school you could finish in four years which is traditional or you could stretch it out to five and that's perfectly fine i know someone who has stretched it to six and that's what they needed so um don't feel pressure you can actually extend high school if you need to um then there's people like my girl who could have graduated in three years and i wouldn't let her so i'm like you know it's just this is an adjustment and you this is your goal and there it's an important goal so um if you have questions on de-schooling let me know um i'm happy to answer any questions on that so but i don't want i don't think you need to skip it so so this one's asked a lot um what should my children learn this is asked a lot I'm going to tell you some places to look for this and um, I'm not, I'm not going to take you out there because then I don't see your questions. Um, scope and sequence. You can type in Google. You can type in your city or your school system and type in scope, scope and sequence and their grade and it will pull it up. You can search that with your state and see what they do there. But the one I like is world book typical course of study now what they did is they took a um, sampling of every state in the u.s and kind of made their own list and i just think theirs is easier to read than if you go to your state department unless you're a trained teacher i was not a trained teacher i was a teacher's assistant for a while but i do not have a degree as a teacher and I just didn't. I, I want it cut and dried, easy to read. Scholastics has the guide to first grade, guide to second grade, third grade, fourth grade. I, they may not go all the way up to high school. So those are some good places to find what you need to be teaching or what your child should be learning. There are books like um, what I can't remember. Can you remember the names of them, Susan? They're like, is it um, what should my first grader know? There are books out there you can buy, but these are just as easy and they're free. All you have to do is Google it and um, they'll come up. But I prefer the the world book typical course of study. It goes starts at um, preschool and goes all the way up to high school, all the way to 12th grade. Um, let's see. Any questions? Y'all y'all throw them out because I mean, I can just I can talk all day long on this kind of stuff. So this is another question I get a lot assessments and testing now first you you look at your state laws whether it's what you're supposed to now that and that's another thing for the to what you should be teaching check your state laws some states do have subjects you need to be you need to pay attention to that and make sure and see what your state does so that's a very important thing what does my what my first grader needs to know i say don't buy it just go to world book it's free it's easy to read you can actually print it off so check that and then check on in your state what they want with assessment and testing. My state does not require anything. Um, that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. So there's standardized test, standardized testing like ACT, SAT, Iowa and more. Um, some can be given by parents, some can't. I believe that the SAT 
is actually you're able to take it online with Bob Jones. Um, I'm a proctor for Bob Jones. I don't tell people that because um, then people will ask me to set up tests and it's so not fun. <laughs> It's <laughs> so not fun to do. So I try to give you online options that you can handle yourself and you don't have to go anywhere. One that I like is Let's Go Learn Math and Reading Only. It's $25 a piece and you have to dig a little bit because they're trying to sell you tutoring. But it's just an assessment and sh shows where your children are. I like that one better than the standardized testing because my children have always been homeschooled. Standardized testing is made for public school. And when you homeschool, you don't always learn the same things that the school system is learning on the same grade level, same time. And so these tests are not easy for a homeschooler to take. So if you don't have it required in your state, I would go to Let's Go Learn. It is just, I think it's an easier one. That's my opinion. Everybody else can, you know, will feel different. But anyway, and then you have placement tests where every math and reading curriculum out there will usually have a placement test. And that's just showing where you fit inside of a, of a curriculum. We hear a lot about this one as homeschoolers, because if you put your children back in public school, they will probably be given a placement test. Now, sometimes people get very um, agitated. They're it's just showing the school system where they are inside that curriculum. So just know that if you do put them back in, this is going to happen. And if their math and their language arts is strong, they're going to be fine and they're going to be on grade level. So don't stress out over that too much. It's not like, um, I think homeschool moms tend to feel like they're being judged. That is not what that, that test is about. They're not going to look at you and say, hey, they don't know anything. They can't come back to public school. They might make you feel bad because, you know, sometimes people, humans are not nice. But um, if their math and language arts is strong, which is something I've always very been very insistent with my kids. If they're on grade level, they're going to be fine. You don't have to worry about that. So exactly. What is next? OK, uh, now we're getting into learning styles. Before we go here, we had some questions that got turned in and I want to handle those first to make sure they get answered. And then I, I, if we have time to go through all these, we may go just through learning styles and stop with the curriculum um, going deeper because it's such a big subject. And I think the last time I did just cook curriculum, it took an hour. So I don't want to exhaust y'all. So if we can go through those questions, Susan. Okay. <clears throat> First, um, Devin, there's been a, a comment made among our moms that are, are watching and, and, and I can appreciate their comment. They said, I love homeschooling, but also afraid I won't teach well enough. And, you know, I think a lot of moms feel that way, but, um, and that goes back to that first slide. The beauty of homeschooling is you can learn too. Um, just like when my, okay, I have a, when I was growing up, it was called a math LD. It is probably undiagnosed dyscalculia. I'm quite sure. In fact, when I look at the, the list of dyscalculia, I hit all of them. But even then, I sat down with my high schoolers and learned math and we survived it. So as long as you're willing to say, hey, I don't know how to do this, but you're willing to learn it too, then you're going to do great. I mean, that's how it is. I mean, just think, let's say you're deciding to make bread. And well, okay, I'll give you an example. My oldest girl wanted to learn how to knit. I couldn't figure out how to show her from YouTube videos. She couldn't figure out and she was frustrated. So I went, she was not old enough to take a class. She was like eight. I went and took a class so that I could teach her how to knit. And it's the same thing with math or language arts or history or science. As long as you come to homeschooling with a willingness to learn, you're going to do great. I'm like, no one loves your child more than you do. No one. And no one is going to want the best for your child more than what than you want. So when you take that, you come into homeschooling like, okay, I may not know this, but I can learn it. 
and we can do it together, your child is going to be thrilled and then, and you can do it. I'm like, it's just, I fully believe any mother can, can homeschool if they come in with that, that willingness to learn. And I think also when they have that caring attitude mm -hmm. of and it, just having that concern that they won't teach well enough, they're going to teach well enough because they care and you're going to connect with your kids and you're going to yeah. do great. And if it's a subject that that is not your forte and you don't connect with it, like Devin's mm -hmm. talking about how you can learn too, you're going to find the resources yes, and um, to help support you through that. Them. Yeah, there's tutors, and, and I'll be honest. When my when I had my my five year old, I it was exhausting. I was 45, and I did hire tutors that year, and so and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with hiring a tutor if you need help. You're, I mean, I talked to a mother this week that needed help with math because she did not know math, and the child was having trouble, and we helped to find her tutors in her area. You can also find other moms that might be willing mm -hmm. to kind of trade around a little bit. There's co-ops, there's, there's all kinds of things. So, you know, to me, if you're a, you're a new to homeschooling and you, ha and you have some of those concerns and you have a subject that's not your forte, mm -hmm. connect with some of your seasoned homeschooling moms and they'll brainstorm with you and they'll help you find some of those solutions. Yeah. Okay, so another question came up, um, Devin. What kind of curriculum is cheap but is still good to use? That's this is kind of a, a three-part question. So I'm going to start with that one first. Okay. Um, there's always cheap out there. Um, easy, P easy peasy all in one is free. It's been out a very very long time. Um, you can she's made it a little bit easier where you can donate and use a little another website to make it a little bit better organized but i think it's very workable a lot of people we send a lot of people there first because it's free there's a lot of other free out there um but then i, I know the, the the thing behind it is is it good curriculum yes sometimes it is and um easy peasy is based on georgia virtual academy which was a public school at home and um, when they were closing that down where people could not attend it anymore, they took the information and made a, another website. So, and they did some of their own too. So um, that's a place to start. I always usually send people there because they can look for it. Then there's some, you know, not expensive ones out there too. You don't have to spend tons of money on a curriculum just because it has a name. A lot of people this year have said we're using a Becca which is a very pricey curriculum, but you don't have to stay there if it's not working. There's just a lot out there. Um, and if you use easy peasy and you feel like it is not giving enough for what you want, you can always supplement it. You can use yes, your library yeah. resources. Um, there's a lot yes, of great, great options. I mean, there's people that will completely homeschool just on the library and what's at the library and you can find it. Game schooling is a big one that you can, you know, it's whatever your budget is. So there's, there's a curriculum for any budget. The other part to this question was, um, do we have to keep records of grades and attendance for state purposes? And are there recommended things that we must teach so that our children can graduate with certain information or certain skills? That will be dependent on the state. Um, some states do require certain subjects. That's go back to your homeschool um, state groups because those mamas, there'll be veteran mamas in there who can give you great information. I know this mama is in Alabama. I'm in Alabama. Alabama does not have state um, subject requirements or um, testing requirements. So you would not have to so do any certain thing in Alabama. Yeah, and uh, one of our um, viewers, and I apologize, I can't acknowledge you because I can't see your name at the, my, on my end, but it says, and you can use several different curriculums also. You yeah. don't have to choose just one curriculum. You can mix and match, which is what's so great about homeschooling. Yeah, you can find what works for your family. And, you know, it's like us. We, um, I was telling in my live earlier that I am switching our science in January, we've done one semester. It is not working. She's not happy. And instead of fighting my freshman, she's um, um, almost 15, I am switching to a different curriculum. And that's okay. It's okay to switch. Um, 
that's one of the beauty of, of homeschooling is finding things that work for you. Absolutely. Another question that was submitted, Devin, is, is there an app that will read a story and then have it so you, the child reads the story aloud back? Um, there are some. I know a lot of moms who have dyslexic, 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 that's what I'm trying to come out with. Um, children will have the audio book and the book in front of them and as a way of building reading confidence. Um, this mama, if it's a younger child, you can find books at your like hoopla. Your, I mean, check your library, see what they've got. They may have hoopla, which will have books on tape too. And then they have, have the actual books. So there's a lot of places you can do it. There are, um, like audio, there's lots of places out there. Um, books is video books put to audio, which it shows it in a video form. And then the, the text is on the bottom. There's a lot of options out there. Um, this is kind of a comment and maybe a question that or a comment that you can kind of give some information on. It says um, that they're working on reading and math, but their child doesn't know how to sound out words. Um, I would go back to basics. Make sure they know letter recognition and sound recognition. Make sure that that is accomplished. And then you can um, do a phonics curriculum. If they cannot read and they're having trouble, I would probably drop all the extras and only do math and phonics until you have the reading. On. Because reading is so important. You need it everywhere. You need it everywhere you go. And you want to make sure that that is um, accomplished. Um, there are a lot of good reading curriculums out there. There's some that are free, some that are not. Also, if they can kind of read, um, Teach Your Monster to Read is a great app for playing. Um, Reading Eggs has a older extension, depending on their age, where you can play games that works with reading comprehension and other stuff. But if they're having trouble reading sounds and reading words, I would just take it back to basics, start from there and just move forward. And sometimes kids are just not ready yet. If they're older, you can, might want to get them um, assessed by a reading tutor. If you're locally to me, we have a long list of a lot of mamas who do reading tutoring and maybe somebody can evaluate separately outside of the situation and make sure there's not something you're missing. Yeah. And, you know, and on that note, like we, we started homeschooling in high school and what I loved about it was there were certain areas that my daughter was struggling with while other areas she could just eat, gobble up the information and go well beyond her grade level. And what I love about homeschooling is if there is a knowledge gap, feel comfortable that you can go back yeah, you can and it. yeah, you can go back and go do those basics mm -hmm. to help your child get that information and then start moving them forward. Um, so never feel hesitant about taking a step back and and working on that skill set yeah it's good yeah somebody said their their children love um enjoy teacher monster to read yes lisi loves it and I, what i didn't realize is that four she was starting to read sight words and i i was like who taught the baby to read sight words oh like oh okay so we we do include that in our curriculum because she likes it that's awesome. Okay, this um, person asked, they'd love some tips on lesson planning. They've been homeschooling for three years. Um, they don't use Vox curriculum. They kind of pull from different resources. And one of the things that they really struggle with is lesson planning. And sometimes things don't get accomplished that they'd like to get accomplished. That's a great question. And it is so great that we're going to handle that one next week. We're going to talk about homeschooling consistency and that will go in that. So I'm not ignoring your question. I'm just saying next week we'll handle that. Yeah. One. Join us next Thursday <laughs> at um, seven, seven o'clock inside seven, the group. No, not 7 a.m. 7 p.m. Central. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say 7 a.m.? I know. I I'm said glad. You, okay. Because I was going to say, I'm glad you clarified <laughs> that. I'm not awake at 7 a.m. <laughs> not usually. Um, okay. Here's another question that says um, they need to ha some help figuring out where to go next. Sometimes they feel really lost, especially with all the abundance of preschool stuff that's available. I know a lot of preschool is about building social skills and other things um, instead of academics. 
but I don't know um, what to teach him in that area. He's already in kindergarten for academics, so I don't want to go any further there, especially considering he's behind in handwriting skills, which I just want to wait and see how those types of things develop and develop at his own pace. She's not wanting to rush anything. Yeah, and, and that that's not a bad thing. Um, with the handwriting, um, look for fine motor skill activities, things. Boys, their, their fine motor skills are a little bit, I think they're a little bit behind what girls are. And you have to be very careful to make sure that, you know, you're not judging that your boys and girls are very different. They just think differently. It's like my my boy did not know how to read until almost fourth grade because he was so busy doing physical things. And I was like completely stressed out. My pediatrician was like, he's just learning something else. It's like, you're OK. He's on he's on track. Like I was like overwhelmed with it. I mean, he was my first. So um, I would add in fine motor skills, encourage things that he can do that, you know, that pinch or gr grasp and all that. But with everything else, I would not completely slow down. With homeschooling, you can keep going and still work on the fine motor skills on the, at the same time. Um, handwriting, I usually don't handle until they finish learning to read. That's just my house. Other people maybe do different. But I focused on phonics and I focused on math. And I did not stress over the handwriting. A lot of parents will, they'll put it all together. I did not do that because their hands, they have to develop. So find things for him to do, find motor activity. They're lots of fun, have them laid out on the table in the morning. I mean, it'll be a lot of fun. So I would, I would do, that's what I would do. Yeah, and keep doing some of those fun things that he loves to do, like really let him excel and grow in those areas and um, let the other areas, like you said, take their time to develop. Yeah. And if he's needing social, if you're working on social skills, because I, I mean, I, I saw this question, I, I know the mom, make sure you're going to park days. I know it's not always easy to do that when you have several littles, but make sure he's going to park days and being with other kids and, and that will help that too. And I mean, well, I think we're actually, I think we actually have a workshop going to come up in probably March on life skills. So we'll add that in there and what's appropriate for what age. I mean, I had that request the other day. Awesome. So. Awesome. Well, that takes me through all the questions that were submitted. Okay. So we are at 40 minutes. I'm going to go through the learning, the learning styles, and I'm going to go through just their names. We're not going to go in detail. We'll do a curriculum workshop in a, in a week or two. I'll have to look at the, the schedule, what we have on schedule and what we, when we can handle it. But we will go over what these are real quick. Um, okay. Let's see. Let me. Okay. So learning styles. We have seven learning styles that influence how our children learn best. And believe it or not, it will influence how you teach or how you want to teach because you have a learning style too. So your job is to kind of find ways to blend these, what, how you want to teach, how they want to learn. So there's visual, which is like, you know, pictures and images and um, video. I have one child who was very visual. This is how she learns. And I discovered it when I was teaching ge geography to her. She was not getting the book, but when we would go on the videos, it came alive. There is audio. I don't know why I have used that word, but audio, which is sound and music. Some children learn that way very well. There's verbal words, both in speech and writing. This would be like lecturing and stuff like that. Physical, which is um, your body and your hands and your touch learning through doing. Logical, which is using logic and reason and systems. I have one that does thrives with that. Social, this is someone who would learn better in groups. My oldest might a little bit, but I don't know that he was really learning more than playing. Then there are children who learn better alone, self-study. And I, I, my, my logical one is also my solitary one. That's the way she likes to learn. Um, so those are our learning styles. We're going to go through those real, went through those. We're not going to go. Here are some resources. I'll go through these real quick. The big what now book of learning styles by Carol Barnier. 
Discover Your Child's Learning Style by Willis and Hudson, The Way They Learn by Cynthia Tobias. And then there's a couple of um, links. I will put those out in um, under the, the, um, the video so you can find them. Okay, let's see. And then teaching styles. Okay, so we these are the homeschool teaching styles. These are the ones that you will hear. If you have any questions? I forgot to go back to stream. Forgot to go look and see if anybody had questions. Nope, you're good. I'm just speeding with what I'm doing. Okay, so there are homeschool teaching styles. You will hear about these all over the place. Um, there's classical, there's Montessori, there's Charlotte Mason, unschooling, or some people will call it child-led learning, traditional, Waldorf, unit studies, Reggio Emilio, and eclectic. Now, these are not... The only one that is specific to homeschooling is probably unschooling, maybe. The rest of the, uh, these are not built into homeschooling. They are teaching philosophies out that have been around for years, but the homeschoolers have embraced them and made them theirs. And you can find lots of resources on that. Let me see. Okay, so here's some, re this is a quiz. It's a fun quiz that I found eclectic homeschool homeschool philosophies quiz lots of fun um this is a great one it has some books and stuff that will go that it actually has some curriculums that go along with these diff different teaching styles so um that is my resources real quick we will talk about curriculum more in detail um maybe next week maybe the week after that we'll see how we can work that out that sounds great. So, so we have several viewers and we want to invite you guys to um, ask any questions that you have. Um, so I want to give you a chance to um, jot those in the comments. But the other thing I want to say is um, Devin, particularly for this workshop, did a great job of um, posting about, hey, give me your questions. Um, we're real people. We're real homeschooling parents and we're happy to help you. So you can feel free to private messenger us um, from, you know, you're inside of our groups. Um, you yeah. can um, ask your questions underneath the post. Um, we're happy to help you and we're happy to do some workshops on it. So I wanted to um, first commend Devin for doing such a great job of um, making sure we, we approach some questions um, prior to the workshop. And um, again, um, if anybody has any questions, let us know inside the comments. Um, there's a comment here that says, this has been a great, thank you so much, a wealth of knowledge and information. So um, thank you for your comment, but thank you, Devin. This, you yeah, are that yeah. seasoned homeschooling mama, and <laughs> it's so you, great to hear from you and, yeah. and the information you have to share with us. Yeah, Susan, you know I love my mom. Is I want y'all to feel happy and successful. It's important. You're important to your families and we want to support y'all. And if you let us know what workshops you need, we will schedule them. We'll find experts in the field and we'll, we'll do what we need to do to make sure you get what you need. Absolutely. And if it's just moral support, we're happy to share that with you too. Oh, yeah. Mamas, you are enough. Um, you are wonderful. You care about your children. You love them. And I'm confident you're doing a great job with homeschooling. Yeah. And um, whenever you have a question, feel free to um, let either one of us know and we'll make sure that we help you to get those questions addressed. But again, yeah. Devin, thank you so I much. Know, for this I always love this workshop. This is one of my favorites to do. Absolutely. And you and I have talked about how we want to put together several other workshops um, that with your wealth of experience in homeschooling to help support our homeschooling moms. Yeah, we love our mamas. So mamas, if you have questions, you can PM me. You can, I think we have the, the ability to, you can do an anonymous questions in the group. If you're, if you're, you know, a little embarrassed or a little worried about anybody seeing you, you can PM us. We'll ask the question ourselves. Um, we want to make sure that you're supported. Absolutely. We want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. Thank you so much. And Devin, again, thank you for the wealth of information that you shared with our groups tonight. So thanks yeah. so much. Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining us.